all of pasta and rice. And there are numbers to prove it. According to the National Pasta Association, yes, such a thing, we eat on average about 20 pounds of it every year, and we eat even more rice, 27 pounds of that every year. But what if it could be healthier? Fox News, Jennifer Williams has some cool news for carboholics. As we all know, New York is very much a takeout town. Some New Yorkers we spoke to said they love the idea of leftovers, while others prefer their starches served hot. I mean, I eat leftovers plenty, so I, I think I'd be okay with it. I personally don't like it. I will throw it out if there's anything left. It turns out cooling pasta, rice, and potatoes creates a healthier carb known as a resistant starch, or a starch that resists digestion. There isn't a whole lot of research showing that resistant starch is going to lead or produce drastic weight loss results, but there is a lot of research showing that it can help to prevent and manage insulin resistance, that it can manage blood sugar, and certainly that it can promote and improve gut health. But wait, there's more. Ultimately, it is a great way to help with strengthen your gut microbiome and diversity in your gut, which can help alleviate digestion issues, help with nutrient absorption, fight against certain diseases, uh, and potentially even with appetite, weight management, insulin resistance. Registered dietitian Lisa Moskovitz says to reap the benefits of resistant starches, foods must be cooked then cooled. There's other sources. So bananas that are less ripe, so more firm, slightly green bananas are another good source. <laughs> Raw oats, which you can sprinkle into your cereal, put into smoothies. And believe it or not, you can buy isolated resistant starch. Raw potato starch comes in like a powder and you could put that on your food and one tablespoon has like eight grams of resistant starch in it. Moskovitz adds to start slowly and avoid consuming more than 30 to 40 grams a day. You do want to be careful, I will warn you, if you're not used to that much resistant starch, which again is very similar to fiber, you will notice a probably drastic uptick in gas and bloating. On the Upper East Side, Jennifer Williams, Fox 5 News. News. Details, details. Mm, I'm paying attention, though, because I do love pasta. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, well, a sure sign that Christmas is right around the corner of the Rockefeller Center tree was chopped down this morning in Vestal, New York. It's traveling about 200 miles to its holiday home in Midtown. That tree, 80 feet tall, 112 tons, and is believed to be between 80 and 85 years old. It used to stand on Jackie McGinley's property. This is a community that is really committed to service, to supporting one another. I've seen that time and time again. And to be able to contribute in a small way to that sentiment, it's been such a joy. Very cool, no doubt about it. The tree at Rockefeller Center will be illuminated for the first time on Wednesday, November 29th, and it will be lit daily through January 13th. All right, let's check the weather. Bridge forcing prices to soar. The biggest reason for the shortage is the warmer, drier weather hitting Peru due to an El Nino weather pattern. On a normal year, they're the world's largest exporter of blueberries, but the extreme heat has cut supplies by 70%, raising prices to almost six bucks a pound. Blueberry lovers may have to wait until spring when the North America growing season gets underway. All right, let's check the weather now with Nick. A little mild, but we're going to be feeling that Christmas-type weather soon. Yes, I think so. In fact, over the weekend, we'll get a little bit of a cool down, so we'll put a little bit of that holiday season weather in the forecast. But there is no snow coming anytime soon. In fact, there's no anything coming anytime soon. We've got a dry forecast ahead, uh, which is pretty decent. We could probably use that, of course. It's still a mainly clear sky tonight, but clouds will be arriving overnight. We managed 57 for the high today, 42 for the low. Pretty close to where we should be, right? 75 and 75 for the record high, and 24 and 1976 right now. Again, it's mainly clear, 54. Wind mostly northwesterly, but light humidity up there at 72%. Pressure's going up quickly, though, to 9 Point nine five, but the temperatures have dropped into the 30s up there in the mid Hudson Valley, low 40s out on the east end, also in North Jersey there by Sussex, but still 50 or greater for the city. 54 there, 56 Newark, 54 down to Trenton, and uh, you know many areas seeing a little temperature gain, particularly south and west of town, as much as 14 degrees warmer than last night. So the winds either calm.
where it's a light northwest wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, highs earlier, we did manage 60s in a few spots. Islip, Newark down towards Trenton, low 60s there, 68 at Belmar, only mid and upper 50s the rest of the area. And as you went into New England, we well, stayed cool there. Only in the 40s, even 30s there at Concord, New Hampshire. Back to the 70s of Philadelphia, southward, even 80s, Richmond, Virginia. That was some of the mile there trying to get really close to us today. 60s heading back to Cleveland, and you're going to see some cool air appear there up over the Great Lakes region in the 50s, and again, then we'll be seeing some of that cool air get sort of reinforced here as we go into tomorrow and then over the weekend. While we're clear now, you can see off to the southwest there are clouds gathering, and those clouds are also leading to some rain now spreading across Kentucky almost to Cincinnati, going right on down to Dallas. This is going to get very close to us. Those of you in central and southern New Jersey, you'll see here in the future cast, might just see some of that rain shower activity come in play tomorrow morning. So you can see it kind of goes along Along here will be 40s out the door mid upper 40s or so and uh, some upper 30s north and west we should only get to about 55 or so tomorrow but that's again about average it'll clear out later on in the day then the cooler air comes in a gusty breeze for saturday we'll start out in the low 40s with some 30s in the suburbs but we'll be struggling to get up over 50 probably stopping at a high of about 51 and then the real chilly air will come in for saturday night into sunday 46 tonight again a lot of clouds will arrive it's 30s to mostly middle 40s you get on into the suburbs Again, tomorrow we'll see clouds with limited sun. That shower threat south of the city. Temperatures that will get into the middle 50s before we start cooling it down here in the seven day. In fact, you'll see Saturday breezy, beautiful, sunny though, only 51. It's only the upper 40s for both Sunday and Monday, but a beautiful dry weekend. Chilly mornings though, in the low to middle 30s. Recovery in temperatures next week, though, we'll probably get to about 60 on Thursday. Natasha. Yeah, looks good. Nick, thank you. Dr.